What's up? Whiskey friends far and wide, we are live. I am Eric, your humble malt muser, and it is Tasty Tuesday, happy hour once again. Raising a glass to everybody. Salancha, how's everybody doing? We got a fun happy hour show as always set up, ready to go today. Uh, hopefully we won't have any of those weird video issues like we were having uh, last week, but if we do, we'll figure it out. Before I set the table, let you guys know what's up for happy hour and for the Telex and Malt Show coming up right afterwards. Three hours whiskey chat on a Tuesday here in December. Get something in your glass. Have a pour. Let's do it. All right. Let me see who was in the chat first, as we always do. What's up with the early birds today? French coming in hot. What's he got to say? Hey, everyone. Looks like I'm first in the door. Shocker. <laughs> Another deep freeze tonight in Duluth. So planning to warm up with some tasty Baker's bourbon. Oh, nice. Is that the new release of that or one of the older ones? I know that they had a newer one that came out. And I want to say this was like, like last year. They got some single barrel type situation that came out. Either way, I'm sure it's good. Enjoy that. Here's our friend in the Bayou Lost Cause. Yeah, baby. Got that allocated bourbon blues. It's that time of year, isn't it? This is the time of year where everybody's uh, trying to get the special releases only to come up short. Well, I hope you find something, my friend. Good to see you, buddy. Daniel, East Texas. What's up, everyone? What's up with you, man? East Coast Jersey. Aaron, 10 open tonight. Just waiting for my six-year-old kid to go to sleep. Yeah, it's about that time, right? Close to it. Tamika in Chicago. What's up, Malt Man and Whiskey Fam? Yellow is a good good on you, boy. <laughs> Thanks, Tamika. You're always coming in with something nice to say. I'm going to get some Evan Williams white label stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Bottle and Bond. That's good. You ain't, you're never going to go wrong with that. And that's really good price on that, too. Cohen. What's up on the West Coast? Here's Maher in India on time. As always, man, nice to see you again. Glad you could stop in and say hi. King of Prussia, I am, sir, I am. Back in Chili Philly, Ontario. What's up, Peter White? Raise a glass to you across the border. How's it going? Got some Balcona single barrel, single cast strength rye matured European oak. Oh, okay. Daniel's ready. Yeah, man. Okay. You always getting those good Balcones releases. Hey, Carl, what's up? How's it going, buddy? Thanks for stopping through. Another friend from uh, across the pond over in Europe. Glad you could join us for a little Tasty Tuesday happy hour, my friend. What's shaking? Oh, Tony's not messing around tonight. Octomore. Damn. Okay. Tony's coming out with the heavy guns right away. Hopefully you'll be able to stick with it. For the uh, tele show. <laughs> Carl's got some of that uh, Taos good Port Rouge. Nice. That's the Sherry Cask one, right? I've actually never had that. 82 in LA, man. I left too early. Jack Pickled Hound still at work. All good, buddy. Hopefully you're getting off soon. We got lots of whiskey chats. Let me let me set things up. So tonight, uh, if folks were around last week, I got a package in the mail from British Columbia, Canada, which only means one thing, and that is samples from food quig and i got a bunch of great canadian whiskeys i got to try a couple with some folks last week i'm going to do another one tonight uh we're going to check out jp weiser's 23 year old cast strength 64.3 percent abv so excited to get into that sample and then uh, a little bit by request uh i'm going to be checking out a independent bottling of bow more this is a 15 year old from bottled by that boutique whiskey company Coming in at 48.3%. We'll check out this bow more. Should be good. Weather's getting cold. Get a nice peated whiskey in the going tonight. And we'll check in on the cake again, which, you know, is what it is. So that's what you got set up for happy hour. Tonight on the Telex and Malt Show, coming up right after this, we're getting into some Ben Romick. 
Uh, Telix and I are going to be doing two tastings of Ben Romick whiskey. We're going to be checking out the Ben Romick Organic and the Ben Romick 15 years old. So hopefully everybody can hang around. Stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, I will drop the link in the chat once Telix is ready for action, as I always do. And before we get started, um, I've been, you know, given the time of year that we're in, it is almost whiskey of the year video season. And so thinking a little bit about what I'm going to do this year, the last two years I have done uh, just kind of a top five. And so this year to do something special, just to thank some of my, uh, the folks on Patreon who have chipped in so far, uh, helped me get my hands on a couple other whiskeys. Uh, I'm going to do an early release of my whiskey of the year video. So uh, if you're on Patreon and supporting the show for even a dollar a month, um, you will get early access to the video. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I always look forward to doing these. I'll drop the link in the chat uh, if anybody's interested in joining. Like I said, uh, as long as you're a Patreon supporter, um, probably by about the 19th, you will get early access to the Whiskey of the Year video. But the other thing is I'm trying to think about maybe doing something different. So like I said, the last two years, I've kind of just done the top five whiskeys that I tasted over the course of that year. This time, though, considering a couple other options. So I was thinking about maybe doing like my favorite style of whiskey each year. So like my top bourbon and then my runner up and my top heavily peated scotch and my runner up, my top Irish, and my runner up. Um, just to kind of mix things up might be fun. Let me know in the chat. I mean, y'all probably see tons of these videos out there when people do their whiskeys of the year. Uh, is there any particular ones that you find super interesting or more interesting than others? If so, let me know in the chat and I'll definitely consider it. Um, I'm definitely going to try to figure out a different format uh, if I, if it, if it suits it um, to do this year. So that should be a lot of fun. So yeah, feel free. Uh, if you haven't yet, you want to join the, uh, the Patreon community, appreciate all the support links in the chat and uh, let me know. Yeah. Um, should we just go straight up top five whiskeys of the year? Kind of bread and butter as usual, um, or try something different. If you got any creative ideas, let me know. After all, this is about you as it is much about me. So, with that, um, I'm going to get this JP Weisers in the glass just to get things rolling tonight. As I mentioned, um, this is a 23 year old cast strength JP Weisers Canadian whiskey, not something I could ever find in the States. Comes uh, highly recommended. I believe uh, I was chatting with Peter White last week about this one a little bit, uh, and he was singing its praises. He might have a little bit more info um, about what he can tell us about this, but 23 years old at cast strength and 60 some percent, man, this, this can't go wrong. I'm gonna let that sit in the glass a little bit. And let me just take a quick look catch up here on the chat. So yeah, as I mentioned, there's the Patreon link. It's in there if you want to join. As long as you're in, uh, you'll get early access to the Wiki of the Year. Sorry about that. Peter White, still have a Ben 10 kicking around. 100. Oh yeah, the Imperial Proof. That's good. Yeah, I actually found a bottle of that this year, which was pretty amazing. Let me just double check, make sure we're not running in any crazy video feed issues like we were last week. Let's look at right. One second, y'all. Let me see if I can fix this right quick. All right. Anyways. Jack the Pickled Hound. I like the 10 more than the 14 I have now. You have a 14 Ben Romick? Interesting. I didn't even know that existed. I'm going to have to keep my eyes peeled for that. I heard Aaron Rodgers was gifted a Glenfiddich 40. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, uh, not only one of my the quarterback of my favorite team, the Green Bay Packers, but also Scotch whiskey fan. So super cool to hear that. Uh, he always mentions that he's going to have a scotch or two after a game, which is super cool. I like the 10 more than the 14. Okay. Hey, Alan, the whiskey friend. What's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping through. Great chatting with you a little earlier today. Appreciate your support and help on the video upload thing that I was dealing with. I like that. Do a top five and you could, and you two of each style. 
two videos slots filled done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Like, so I'm either going to just do the straight up top five of like whiskeys across the board, or else I'm thinking about doing like two in each style or something like that. Cause I'm not sure I've drank enough of all of those to actually make a worthwhile top five, especially like bourbon. I didn't really get into a lot of bourbon this year, but I uh, definitely like the idea. Peter White said, uh, always thought it was strange that some YouTubers have whiskey of the year and it's all bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to mix it. I mean, the ones that I've done the last couple of years, it's been a mix between, I just put, you know, the, my top five favorites is basically what I've done. The ones that I thought were the best things that I had that year. I try to like balance it out by cost. I mean, I don't want my top whiskey to always be something, you know, that's inaccessible, but yeah, it should be fun. 90% corn, 10% rye on the JP Weiser's 21. Okay. Or 23. Great to know. Great to know. Okay. Oh, right on, Peter. <laughs> nice. Cheers, buddy. I'm going to let that sit for just a few minutes longer before we get into it. Your page says that Jack was the first Aaron I tried. Oh, you're talking about the Aaron 10? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I have not had the Aaron 10. I've had the, uh, I think Telix and I did an Aaron tasting. Man, I want to say this was like, a couple months ago. Uh, I also do have a bottle of the Aaron quarter cask, the Bothy, uh, which is delicious, uh, which I'll probably be doing a review of early next year. Really good peated whiskey, NAS, but quarter cask, you really can't go wrong with it. All right. So thanks to our good friend, Peter White, giving us the rundown on the JP Weiser's 23 year old cast ring. This is the color we're looking at. Not sure if that's real color or not, but it is a 23 year old cast drink. The whiskey, I got to assume there's got to be something good in here. They probably didn't mess with it too much. 90% corny said, so this is going to be real sweet. All right. Canadian whiskey. As I was talking about a little bit last week uh, on a Friday impromptu stream that I did, man, we can't find good Canadian whiskey to save our lives in the United States. So, when some of our good friends to the north of me take the uh, opportunity to send me some stuff, it's always a treat because I think that Americans in general have a little bit of a misperception about Canadian whiskey because the only things we ever get are things like, you know, Crown Royal, you know, and all those like weird flavors they do, Crown Royal Apple, Crown Royal Salted Caramel, Crown Royal whatever. You know, Canadian, uh, we get we do get the Pipe Creek rum cask, but don't see much other ones. And then we also get stuff like, uh, obviously, like the low-end Canadian club, stuff like that. So not an easy thing to get really good quality Canadian whiskey here. So samples like this are always appreciated. So with that, let's dig into this nose. Very sweet. He said it was 90% corn. That's not a surprise. It almost smells a bit like a weeded bourbon. Very sweet. Honey. There's some like light apple. There's a little tropical in it. A little bit of uh, milk chocolate. Again, 23 years. Peter, if you, uh, if you have a, uh, a sense of it, I'd love to hear what a bottle like this costs. I can't imagine this is, rel this is very cheap. All in all, really ple pleasant nose. The more you nose it, there's, you're getting more fruit notes. It's like apples for sure. There's maybe even a little bit of like light berry, some kind of confectionery sugar thing going on. He says it's $150 Canadian. So this is less than two, probably around 200 bucks or less in the US, which is crazy. Man, what a deal. All right, let's give it a taste. Happy Tasty Tuesday, everybody. Hmm. Wow, really juicy. A lot of fruit in this. Caramel, soft, like saltwater taffy. It's a lot of sweet. It's kind of a sweet and slightly sour. There's a nice pepper spice in it too that kind of comes in at the back end. I think it's more like a cinnamon thing than anything. Really good. Medium on the finish. I'm actually a little surprised this medium, this finish got a little shorter than I thought it would be. 
getting some kind of like malted milk balls, like those Whopper candies or whatever. Maybe even a little bit of coffee espresso type thing. Popcorn. Graham cracker maybe, I don't know. Or marshmallow, not graham cracker. Yeah, this is tasty. So at 150 bucks Canadian, I mean, I'm not even sure what that is equivalent to US. Is it higher or lower? It's lower, it's not actually higher, right? So that's something like, I don't know, 130 bucks, 120 bucks. That's crazy. Interesting thing about this though, despite being, what did I say it was? Something like 64% ABV. This is pretty drinkable neat. It's definitely not, it's not a three alarm fire or anything like that. I'll do one more sip of this and then I'll probably put some water on it. Emily Chambers is in the house. What's up? How are you? How are things in South Florida? Thanks for stopping through as always. Good to have you in the house, Emily. Yeah, you're probably, that makes a lot of sense. You're probably right. There's just not enough of it, which is a bummer <laughs> because we really do miss out on a lot of Canadian whiskeys down here. Wow, the second taste on this is even better. This is really rich. It's almost like, um, it's that, uh, what's that toffee candy that like, you know, your grandma always has in the basket on the table. What is that stuff called? It's not exactly toffee, but it's not exactly butterscotch. Oh man, gold, gold wrapping Werther's. A little bit of that going on in this. It's just this really buttery, creamy whiskey. And then you get a nice hit of, it's almost like dry cinnamon. I think uh, Peter White just said caramel corn. Yeah, definitely. There's some of that. I was thinking it was like popcorn earlier, but more of that now for sure. Yeah, this is quite good. Jeez. You imagine finding a 23-year-old whiskey for $110 in the States, y'all? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, this is good. The ones that I tasted last week, I did a Cast Strength Alberta Premium. I feel like this could actually go to go to uh, go to the mat with that. Wow, nose on this is just getting more and more full. Let me know in the chat. Have any of y'all had any high end Canadian whiskeys for the folks that aren't in Canada? <laughs> I know Peter White has. Yeah, buttery man, damn. This is really, really nice. Hey, Juan, how are you? How are things out on the Hawaiian Islands? Thanks for stopping through. We're just checking out a little Canadian whiskey right now. I'm about to put a couple drops on this just to see what else happens here. This is JP Weiser's 23-year-old cast ring. Yes, were there? Were there originals? Yep. <laughs> Central Florida, North Panhandle. For some reason I thought you were south. I think we've been through this a few times. I'll remember it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Hmm. So the water has tamed this nose down. That sweetness has went down. It's starting to bring out a bit more of the spice and complexity. Hmm. The apple note. Yeah, this is nice. Hmm. Man, that is good. It isn't the most complicated whiskey. And I think uh, Peter had mentioned 90% corn in the mash bill. That might have something to do with it. My guess is, of course, this is ex-bourbon matured because you're getting a lot of these. There's vanilla, the caramel, the toffee, or the, the Werther's or whatever. I don't want to slander real toffee by calling Werther's toffee necessarily. 
but it's gotten a little bit more of the darker notes and now the cocoa, a little bit of the oak spice, cinnamon. A little drying on the mouthfeel or on the finish though. Not bad, man. This is not bad at all. At $110, if this was available in the US at that price, this would be a buy right away. Um, hmm. Mm. It really smells like you just like like fresh hay, sweet corn. Nice stuff. Yeah, I can get down with this. Again, I don't know if he's watching. We got 17 folks in the chat. That's awesome. Happy Tasty Tuesday, everybody. Shout out to the Quig. If he's here, if he's not, thank you again for these generous Canadian whiskey samples. This is quite delicious. Peter White said that cast drink, the Alberta Premium cast drink, is sixty-five Canadian. So much, but wow, really? So I had that on a stream on Friday. That's incredible. That's basically free. <laughs> what is that? Forty dollars US for the Alberta Premium cast drink? Damn. Okay. That's an NAS, but I, I still almost think it's better than this one. Yeah. I, Maybe not so much better, but it definitely was. It had more. It had a little bit more complexity and a little bit more layers to it. This is very straight up sweet with a little bit of little bit of bitter and sour. Hmm. Okay. We can get down with this. Hmm. Good stuff. We're rolling. Tasty Tuesday, y'all. We're not pulling any punches today. We start with the big one, the cast strength. A lot of sweetness. Good whiskey. Really good whiskey. Let me grab another glass. All right. We'll get a little cake in the glass. Like I said, this has been open for about five, six weeks now. I put quite a dent in it. I, I poured a sample for Telex. We'll definitely do a tasting with him. Uh, so far, this has been an underwhelming whiskey, I think. Uh, maybe not unexpectedly. It does look really nice sitting on a on a whiskey bar, I'll tell you that much. I do like the creative labeling they did with this. And the fact that it's 46%, you do not find a lot of Glenmorangies coming in at 46%. And as it, as it is, it's, this, it's finished in this Tokaya dessert wine cask, which is some Hungarian wine thing. Uh, dessert wine. The rest, I'm assuming, is ex-bourbon. Oh, and it says non-chill filtered. Real small here. So that's good. However, is it really that great of a whiskey? Basically, my summary was, when I first opened this a while back, is it kind of, it, it, it arrived really nice. It came in pretty sweet. It had a nice, had some nice viscosity to it. You definitely tasted that dessert wine cask finishing on it, but it still had the nice Glenmorangie kind of core, which is the honey, slight, slightly kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of that creamy citrus kind of thing going on. Um, and the and the barley note. I mean, the nice barley, um, which you notice a lot on the Cadbull Estate. This one comes through in here a bit too. But it fell apart a bit. It definitely falls apart a bit as it like... Um, as it as it developed and that's partially maybe because of the nas you know it's not i don't know how long this thing has been aged um so we'll see but before we get into this let me just do a quick uh roundup of what's going on so it is of course tasty tuesday and that of course means happy hours in full swing at 9 p.m. Eastern, Telex and Malt Show, we are going to check out Ben Romick. We got Ben Romick Organic and Ben Romick 15. So three hours of whiskey chat every Tuesday, as you guys all know. I will drop the link when Telex is ready to get after it. Um, and we're going to be checking out Ben Romick. Really looking forward to this show. The Ben Romick Organic is one that I got earlier this year, which is a really tasty one. And of course, the uh, 15, which Telex has not had either, so that should be good. Also, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I just dropped the Patreon link in the chat. Um, this year, I'm going to do something a little special uh, for the folks who are already supporters on Patreon. 
I will be dropping uh, an early release to y'all of my Whiskey of the Year video, which will be coming up in the next week and a half, two weeks. Uh, if folks are interested in joining, supporting the show, of course, I super appreciate that. And uh, as long as you join in the next two weeks, you will uh, get early access to that as well. So looking forward to that. And again, like major support uh, and thank you for everybody, not only who has supported on Patreon, but just hanging out every year. Y'all make this so much fun. Um, and I can't thank you enough for all that. So with that, now that we got that JP Weiser's 23 cast strength down the hatch, Let's six weeks, y'all. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Like I was saying, there's the, the you're uh, who said it? the Whoppers and the Werther's original, right? <laughs> that shit's funny. Cohen, what's up? Just bought the Trader Joe's 2020 Vintage Ale. Whoa. $5.99 for an entire bottle of 9% ABV. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to hear what that's all about. Florida is close enough. I got my BA from Miami. I thought you were in Florida. You're not in Florida anymore? Why did I have that idea? For Aaron 10, I'm going to try the Master Scotch Advent Calendar. Aerolite Lindsay from Character of Isla. Okay. That sounds good, Andrew. Is that six-year-old bag is asleep now? Time to get after it. Yeah, you have to tell me what that's all about. I've never even heard of that. They'll go down like water after the wise. Yeah, no doubt. That that JP Wisers was delicious. And again, if I don't know if food quigs in the house, but thanks again for the generous Canadian samples. That was awesome. Whiskey in the six. Hey, Rob, what's up, buddy? Another uh, good friend of ours from Canada. Cheers, man. Thanks for stopping in. Just doing a little happy hour, getting warmed up for the uh, Tuesday show, having a couple drinks with folks. Thanks for stopping in. Folks saying hi to Rob. Rob, uh, if, if if for some reason anybody here of y'all 17 folks that are in right now are not subscribed to uh, yeah, sorry about that, y'all. Still having a weird internet issue since I moved the studio. Apologies for that. But anyways, as I was saying, yeah, go go subscribe to Whiskey in the Six. He's got great stuff. He does some amazing high-end stuff, uh, but also a lot of accessible whiskey rounds. Seems to get his hands on stuff before I even know it's out on the market. So thanks for swinging in, Rob. Appreciate your, your uh, support hanging out. And um, yeah, folks, check out his channel. Maher. I wish you could get all these beautiful whiskeys in India. Yeah, you know, we were talking about that. Did you did you get that Lagavulin 16 yet? I know we were having a chat about that. Um, I hope you got your hands on it. Uh, for folks who weren't around on Friday, Maher actually has been uh, diving into the peated malts and um, had his first experience with Lafroig 10 and is now uh, looking for that next step. And we were talking about maybe Lagavulin 16 as kind of, you know, one of those rite of passage whiskeys that you should try early in your Isla journey. And um, so we were chatting about that and some art bags and stuff. So yeah, do uh, hope you get your hands on that, man. As for this other stuff, I don't know. You're not missing much with the cake. I'm just going to be real with you. How cold is it in Eastern Canada? Yeah, I can't even imagine. It's, I mean, it's been pretty chilly here. Stephen Connors in the house. What's up, buddy? Tennessee. How things going? Finished the Benro Mc10 last month. Man, I the Benro Mc10 is great. There's they discontinued this one that was the Benro Mc10 Imperial Cast Strength. I found a bottle of it probably about three months ago, sitting in a collecting dust at a shop. I had to grab it. That one you can't find anymore, which is a real bummer. But the, but the regular 10 is no slouch. That's a really good whiskey. Um, I was actually considering grabbing that one for Telex and I's show tonight, but um, I ended up stumbling across the organic and that one's really kind of unique. I wasn't able to find it many other places. So we're gonna check that one out. But yeah, definitely the Ben Romic 10. You can't go wrong with that. It's a good pour. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else is going on? Toronto is Eastern Canada. Yeah, about right. What's up, Rob? Hey, thanks for stopping in, man. Good to see you. 
beer fans rod j beer ventures can't go wrong he's got a great stream he does you you still like you like live streams every thursday night or something like that um i've been trying to jump in as i do like to get me some good beers every once in a while for sure and if you're looking to get some knowledge on that man rod knows what's up thanks for stopping in bro richie what's up glad to have richie in the house great we got we got the crew in tonight y'all thanks everybody for hanging out folks saying hi to each other nova scotia is eastern canada <laughs> all right okay so let's jump back into the cake so Glen Morangy Taylor Cake, great presentation, pedestrian whiskey. That's been the consensus so far, at least in terms of uh, my experience with it. 46%, non-chill filtered. I've had this open for about six weeks. Um, it is finished in Tokaya dessert wine casks. That is a um, Hungarian wine cask. The guy that their master distillers is all about that stuff and crafted this whiskey for that, so on and so forth. Um, NAS says it's reminiscent of cake, right? And the box actually tells you, you should be drinking it with cake. So a little bit of mixed messaging on it. Anyways, there's the color on this. This is definitely fake color. That's what you're looking at. However, it is non-chill filtered, which is great. Let's see what's been going on with this. So again, you get that nice Glenmorangie profile. Sweet barley, the honey, the orange, orange like light citrus, it's all there. I think a good one to get your bearings on with this is the 15 Cadbull Estate, because you do get a lot of that similarity. And then there's the sweetness. Um, it's sort of like frosting. I, I know that sounds ridiculous. I'm getting that uh, motivated, suggestive reasoning from that thing. Um, if there's any cake that this smells like, it's like vanilla frosted angel food cake or something. But it's not strong up at all in the nose. The nose is actually quite balanced. But as I was saying, like this thing kind of falls apart towards the middle of the development. So it definitely was doing that when it was first open. Let's see what we got going now. Slot y'all. It has gotten better. It seems like it's holding itself together more. The oxygen has worked a bit of magic on this. Again, it tastes like a very typical ex-bourbon matured Glenmorangie with a little bit of extra sweetness, kind of like an effervescence. You're getting some, you're getting some nice, ooh, okay. Well, I was just gonna say it's this nice kind of extra punchy French vanilla type thing. The finish has actually gotten a little better too. And there's this nice surge of a like milk chocolate, faint milk chocolate that's coming through at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this is not a, it's not amazing. Um, this is about a hundred dollar whiskey. And if you saw my review on Friday, um, where I reviewed the first of the Glenmorangie small batch release series. It is a 10 year, uh, 12 year old Malaga cask finish, 47.3%, also non chill filtered. I think the thing that's so interesting about that is, is that came out at the pretty much the same time as the cake, and I, it got very little fanfare. In fact, I didn't even know about it until I came across it randomly at a shop. I think that's just a superior whiskey to this, and it's cheaper too. So if you had the choice, grab that. This one, it's not bad. Um, it's serviceable. It's got some nice flavor. It's definitely gotten better with oxidization, for sure. No doubt about it. Is it still a, is it a $95 to $100 whiskey? I don't think so. I mean, like, it would have been nice if they could have just, like, took the Glenmorangie 10, like they do with all of their other finished whiskeys, and put it into a, uh, a sherry cask for another two years, or in this case of the Quinta Rubin, four years. So you have a little bit more depth to it. This is a very light, sweet whiskey. 
obviously marketed towards gifts and towards, you know, well, it looking pretty. <laughs> the juice is fine. I just don't know if I would throw that money down again. We'll throw a little water on it, do it justice, right? 46% is nice. My guess is, is that if it was bottled any lower ABV, that wine cask, dessert wine cask would just get drowned out. So I'm wondering if it's actually a very delicate dessert wine. Mm. Yeah, nice. It's nice on the nose. Inoffensive, relatively pleasant, sweet, slightly fruity, classic Lenmorangi orange, honey, you know, all that stuff. Not much changing with water. Yeah, it's about the same. You're maybe getting a little bit more of a citrus note to it, uh, a sharper citrus, but nothing approaching like lemon or anything like that. It's just orange. A lot of orange. Mm. <laughs> with water this actually falls apart a little bit quicker i shouldn't say falls apart it gets a little more disjointed on the on the arrival actually oh yeah the finish is shortened up pretty considerably it's much more it's reminding me much more of what it tasted like when i just opened the bottle finish is shorter you're getting a little bit of a bitterness there's a that cocoa note but the integrity of it the kind of the glue holding it together seems to have dissipated quite a bit with water. This, yeah. You know, uh, this is this is much better without water. It's just lost. It's lost some of its viscosity, some of its like potency in terms of you know getting the full flavor. I don't know, man. I don't know about this cake, y'all. I sort of wish I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> Um, we're going to do a full review. And of course, Telex and I are going to taste it. We got to see what Telex has got to say about it. But I can't imagine he's going to be blown away by this either. This isn't exactly his wheelhouse. If there was a, if there was something I would compare this to, this would be compared to like a Sauternes finish. We get that nice kind of like sweet, it's almost peach, like light vanilla, a little bit of orange. I think a Sauternes finish. So like if you think of the Glenmorangie Morgy Nectar Door, that's one that would be sort of comparable to this, but I think it's better, even without the age saving. And cheaper. It is what it is. I'm a Glenn Morangy fan. Y'all know that. I am not one to... Uh, to slight Glen Morangy. I think Glen Morangy does some of the better sherry finishes. I think almost all of their whiskeys are pretty solid. Um, I actually really can't think of one that I've had, and I've had probably close to 10, that I thought was, wasn't was good. Um, my favorites are the Glen Morangy Spios, which is the private edition from like two years ago. It's the uh, rye cast maturation. That one's really good. And then this Malaga cask one that just came out, which is fantastic. This one would be on the lower end of the Glen Morangy list. Better than the 10? Yeah. $50 better than the 10? No. Yeah, it's just kind of a, it's kind of like what it says it is, but you just hope it's going to be a little bit more. Too delicate. I kind of want it to be more forceful. So it goes. Let me catch up on the chat. Actually, first, I'll put this in the glass. So the last little thing we're going to taste tonight, um, Andrew Page had actually asked about this, and I figured it's December. It's a good time to do it. This is a independent bottling Beaumore um, from that boutique whiskey company, 15 years old, 48.3% ABV. So I'll tell you a bit more about that in a sec, but let me catch up in the chat as I am stupidly far behind as always 
Okay, folks were saying hi to each other. Molasses, hey, what's up? How are you? Thanks for stopping through. Late as usual. Ah, man, you're never late. You're just in time. Been a bit unwell for a while, and I didn't get a chance to get the bottle, but I will soon. I'm making a list as well to pick four and five months. Oh, right on. Well, I hope you feel better, man. Keep yourself as healthy as you can. No need to tempt the fates these days. The Aerolite Lindsay is good. It is an unnamed Isla. My guess is Kalila. It has their peat profile, but it's better due to being non-chill filtered at the end of the day and 46%. Okay. And that's from um, the advent calendar that you're doing? I really got to do one of those one of these years. That would be so much fun. I've never I've never got to get my hands on one. It would also be a lot of fun to make one for somebody. Like make an advent calendar for like a couple friends. Send like 25 samples or whatever. That'd be legit. I definitely have 25 whiskeys I'd want to share with somebody. Good to hear though. Yeah, I've never even heard of it, so. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't surprise me if it's Kalila, right? I mean, Kalila is one of those whiskeys that's that finds itself in so many blends, in so many like independent bottlings. Very often. Let's see, folks saying hi to Richie. Peter White says, I got some bottles of Rendezvous Rye Barrel Select that were finished in Hungarian cask. Oh, wow. Okay, the High West stuff. Ooh, that could be interesting. That rye is like giving more body. That, that actually sounds appealing. Um, that would be cool to get my hands on. I, I just actually learned recently that they were doing... Um, um, like picks of the high west because high west started making their own juice i think in the last couple of years they were like mgp stuff before if i'm not mistaken um yeah that's good to know i have to keep my eyes peeled for that yeah no kidding that would be cool to know if it was cast strength it was bitter select picks are incredible. yeah yeah for sure for sure the price of the cake is why i pet yeah yeah, no, I agree with you. It's not worth the $90, man. Especially with this Malaga cask, man. I'm telling you, this this 12-year-old Malaga cask finish, it's eight years ex-bourbon, four years first fill Malaga cask, which is like PX Oloroso, basically, uh, like a fusion of the two. And it's like 70, 12-year age statement, non-chill filtered, 47.3%. I mean, you don't run into a lot of Glenmorangies that are that high ABV and coming with that much, uh, that much arsenal, man. Seriously, I hope you can find it. I found mine at Total Wine. There was somebody who suggested it might be a Total Wine exclusive release. I hope that's not the case. Um, but there's Total Wines in LA, man. Hunt for it. You will not be disappointed. It is delicious. All right, what else is going on here? High West only selects rendezvous selects and distillery now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. The Prairie Pixar, I didn't really love their Prairie Bourbon. That was not one of my favorites. What would have been your favorite Glenmose Special Edition since Stephen Connor to clarify the private editions? Yeah. Um, I've had a few. I think the Spios is my favorite. The Spios, I thought, was freaking fantastic. It For me, it was... So there's a little bit of a bias in that I, I got excited about it because it's so rare to find a rye finished scotch. I can think of three off the top of my head, the Spios, that Chivas Regal 13, uh, Manchester United. And then there's the uh, Glen Allocky nine-year-old Ryewood. It's just not something that I run into very often. So I was quite excited about, you know, to see like, what does a single, you know, what does, how does, a full barleyed whiskey actually work with um, with with rye, and I thought that one was awesome. It was forty six percent. It had really really good body, nice spice, but it was well balanced. I I thought that was a great whiskey. Um, what was the one before that? And I'm blanking on the name. The Star. Fuck, I can't quite remember. 
It might have been the Astar, in which case that one was really, really good. Um, but I mean, honestly, when it comes to Glen Morangy, I, I, I Glen Morangy to me is daily drinker at really good quality. La Santa, Quinta Rubin, um, the Nectador, it's a little bit pricier, but um, I, I really think they do a great job with their with their finishes. And that's one of those things that I I really gravitate towards with them. They did, you know, they're a little hit and miss at times. I thought the eight, I think the Glenmore G18 is really good. The 15 Cad Bull Estate, which is that one that came out earlier this year, was fine. Um, I think it's probably better than the cake. It was like one of these more like local barley type angles that they were working with. And you really did get a sense of the barley profile of Glenmore G from that one. Um, but it didn't have a ton of complexity. Yeah, um, I think the Spios, to be honest with you. I, I can't remember the name of the one that came up before that, which was also pretty solid, but I don't think I liked it as much as the Spios. I think it was the Astar, but I might be mistaken. All right, let me just catch up and see what else is going on here. Picked up it after the last live stream. It's my first coming. Oh, congrats. You're going to love that. That's going to set a high bar for Glenmorgie. <laughs> Wait until you try the standard 10 or the, the other ones. You're going to be like, wow, that's weak. Glenmorangie is a very delicate whiskey. They have like the tallest stills in Scotland or whatever. And so a lot of those like heavier, you know, the, the heavier, um, what do you want to call it? molecules, whatever, don't make it to the top of the stills. So it's a very like refined whiskey in that sense, very light and palatable. But I like it. I think. They're the both really good whiskeys to get your hands on if you can. Uh, do let me know how you like that. Because that's an enjoyable one for sure. 59 bucks from Internet Wines. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. You're really going to enjoy that. Oh, yeah, Johnny Walker Red Rye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one exists out there, too. Cohen says, Glenmo does better in red wine finishes, and that is why I bought two Malagas at Internet Wines for 69 of these. That's the breast pressure. Dude, yeah. Let me know when you guys open those. That's is Cohen. I mean, come my review, like, on Friday. I'm just like, oh, Sorry if I'm getting a little bit of internet static right now, my friends. I hope this is still coming through for you all right. Oh, yeah, Bacalta. That's right. That makes sense. That's what it was. A star was not a private release, or they did it as like a special release, and then they updated another one in like 2017 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. Not a huge fan of Glenn Moe fan, but... Uh, yeah, uh, those are all three that I've not had. <laughs> so I got something to look forward to if I can ever find them. And you like the Astar. Yeah, cool. A lot of love for the Astar in here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I never had an Indie Bomo before. Curious with that Boutique Whiskey Company bottle. Also, Saratoga has it exchange for 103. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so um, Bomo. My least favorite of the Isla distilleries. With a caveat, and the caveat is, is I've only had their 12, their 15, and their 18, all of which I found to be like pretty, nah, especially their 12. I think their 12 is one of the worst 12s that you can get your hands on. A lot of colorant, chill filtered, 40%. It's not great. Um, the 15, I know some people have opinions on. I don't like it really either. I also thought it was kind of meh. So what I got here is uh, this is from that boutique whiskey company. Now, everything that they release comes in uh, 375 mil bottles, so keep that in mind. This one is 15 years old. It is 48.3%. So for those of you who've had Beaumore before, and maybe we're like, wow, look at the color of this. The thing to keep in mind is much like Dalmore, I think that they are they use, and maybe I mean Akintoshin, like the amount of colorant they put in their whiskey is pretty significant. Um, this is what a Bomor looks like without color added at 15 years. I mean, that looks like an Ardbeg tent, right? So off the bat, you can tell already, like, 
wow, right? This is <laughs> this is a totally different Bowmore than than what you're used to. Um, I I've enjoyed this a bit. I bought it actually at a tasting that I did at. Um, we had somebody from that boutique come to a Philadelphia Whiskey Society thing. This was right before COVID, and uh, and this gave us the opportunity to try a whole bunch of these. Hmm. So right away on the nose. Before I do that, actually, I'm sorry. I got to give a shout out. Um, Carl uh, Carl has joined on Patreon. Carl, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, I'm going to do a little special thing for the Patreon supporters this year. I'm going to release my uh, Top Whiskeys of 2020 video a little early. If you want to chip in, as little as a dollar a month gets you in, helps support the show, keeps me going, and uh, we'll also... Uh, ensure that uh, you get early access to that. So super appreciated. I'll drop the link in the chat one more time. Um, and I'll be releasing that, yeah, within the next two weeks. So if you're in, you'll you'll get it. And um, again, I mean, beyond that, I just appreciate the amount of support everybody gives, whether it's watching or chipping in through Patreon. So y'all are the great. Slancha. So this is what a Bowmore 15 is working with. I mean, it's just, I wish I had the regular Bowmore 15. I won't buy one. I just won't. But if somebody sends me a sample, I'll do a comparison video or something like that. This its this reminds me of a nice, um, like a Kalila. It's fresh. Like there's a nice peat smoke coming through on this. It's not dark. You know, this is much more like a Kalila than it is like a Lagavulin, where you're not getting those really dark seaweed notes. This is much more fresh peat. There's earth tones. There's nice ex bourbon notes. <sighs> there's a nice little bit of a, a sharpness to it. I think it's more like, I don't know, maybe salty, maybe citrus. It's really, really nice on the nose. Yeah. 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 Their standard lineup is, is trash. But this indie bottling, I'm, not, I'm curious if anybody's ever had another independent bottling of Bowmore outside. I mean, th that boutique, this is the first one I've ever seen, but I'm, I'm sure they exist. It's just such an, it's it's a totally different whiskey. The higher ABV, there's some nice like pepper notes. There's even a little bit of floral. You were saying $103 for this half bottle. I don't know. It really depends, man. I mean, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this, but I also think $103 can go pretty far with a full bottle. If you can find it cheaper, I would hunt for it. But this is good. Look at Ace Spirits. There's even like a slight coconut. If, if I was going to compare this to, yeah, if I was going to compare it to anything, this is like, this is like a nice cast strength, like 50% 50, 50 independent bottling of Kalila. If you put this next to like a uh, Berry Brothers and Rudd, you know, 11 year or something. It's like kind of in that same wheelhouse. Except this has got a little bit more of those bourbon. It's quite nice. Hmm. Yeah. Really good. Nice full development. Ex bourbon notes, saltiness. Salt, sweet, bitter. And then as it develops, you get this nice, heavy hit of like effervescent peat smoke. And it's got some kind of like milk chocolate. There's a little bit of like nutmeg allspice. It's got a really nice long finish. Juicy fruit gum. Pear apple. Oh, it's so good. I. This is a testament to the independent bottling, man. It's just, I can't imagine once you have this that you'd ever buy like a 15 but more again. It's just really got a nice, I mean, this is just quality. This is just straight up quality. Um, that boutique is not cheap. I actually have a couple others from them. Um, let me take a look. Yeah. So I have a 14 year old Port Charlotte. Um, this one is at, yeah, 51%. 
I have a Glen Elgin nine and a, uh, this is a two ships or three ships, <laughs> six year old South African. They put out some really nice stuff. I think they do quality stuff. The only thing is you got to pay for it. Um, they have, they have so many, they have like an art bag 12. I got to sample that. I actually had a similar to this Bomore. I actually got to taste a Dalmore 15 which was like a little over 50% and wasn't colored to all hell and stripped of everything. And that was pretty good too. Um, and it just goes to show that so many of these distilleries have great, like they're making quality spirit. It's just about their marketing and like who they're trying to sell it to. And so it's that aspect of it that I think stunts, you know, folks like us who are looking for the quality, not necessarily just the fly by night, you know, pour of something um how much we miss out on these things and these these independent bottlings really do kind of play a testament to that so yeah this Bomore 15 indie bottling is fantastic i just don't know if i would spend 103 dollars on a half bottle of it maybe there's a nice like lemon meringue thing coming <laughs> What Peter said. There you go. Thankfully, Bowmore has a lot of independent bottlings, it looks like. Oh, nice. Trooper! What's up, buddy? Slancha, happy TXT Tuesday. We are getting close to Telus Watch territory. So let me just bring things around here. Internet connectivity issues. I don't know. I'm working on it. At least the video has been good this time. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Oh, he says it's not. That was the distillery. Okay. My bad. Never mind. Yeah, Trooper, that's exactly what we were just discussing. This is a um, <laughs> Trooper, for, for context sake, this is the color of a, what Bomar 15 really looks like. <laughs> I mean, it looks like an art bag. Nice light color. Compare that to the darkest, which darkest meaning, you know, a gallon of color. As I was saying, okay, um, so we're about to hit the top of the hour, and that means we are getting super close to Talix and Malt Tasty Tuesday show. So we got another two hours of whiskey coming up for you guys. Um, I hope you all can join us. Telix and I this week are going to be diving into Ben Romick. Um, up for tasting this week, we're going to be doing the, uh, in the first hour, we're going to be checking out the Ben Romick Organic. Um, this is an NAS whiskey from Ben Romick. Both of these are before they did their, uh, rebranding. Um, this is a, uh, independent or a, not independent and a non age statement bottling at 43% ABV, if I'm not mistaken. And then in hour number two, we are going to be checking out the Ben Romick 15 years old. So we got two Ben Romicks. Um, if this is a distillery that y'all have opinions on, bring them over to the Telex and Mall show because we want to hear about it. Um, otherwise, we are also just uh, going to be diving into this. We will be sharing our tasting notes. Should be a lot of fun. Um, once the link is ready, I'll drop it in the chat as always. And um, with that, yeah, let me just get back into this Bowmore because I'll be honest, I'm surprised I haven't finished this Bowmore given how freaking delicious it is. I just wish I could get my hands on more of them. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Okay, so um, check the chat. Uh, I just dropped a link. That is the link for uh, Telex and Malt Show. We'll be getting into Ben Romix. Um, I will see everybody over there just a few minutes. Again, appreciate y'all. Uh, love hanging out on Tuesdays. Thank you for the support. And um, one more plug, if you join on Patreon, the link is in the chat somewhere. Um, you'll get uh, the early release video of my top whiskeys of the year. So looking forward to that. Thank you guys so much for the support there. And also just for hanging out, tuning in this year. It's been so much fun. Um, we got a couple more shows left before we finally close out this follow year of our Lord, 2020. 
Uh, so glad to have spent some of this time with y'all. I think helps me kind of get through this crazy year, if I'm being real. <laughs> All right. I'll sign off there. I'll catch you guys over on Telex's show. Link is in the chat. And uh, let's talk Ben Romick. Peace, y'all. Be well. Wear a mask. Much love. <laughs>